Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. There are no limits to the imagination, do you agree? If you do, you definitely are a comic book geek. And if you don't, stay with us till the end because today's video is going to be all about imagination. Who would have thought that daydreaming and imagination could lead to the creation of an entire multi-billion dollar comic book industry? But it did. And we have the great Jack Kirby to thank for it. Kirby was not just an American comic book artist, writer and editor, but also a visionary who revolutionized the medium of comics. He created many of the greatest comic book characters of all time, including Black Panther, the X-Men and many more. So let's celebrate the power of imagination. Let's celebrate Jack Kirby and explore every single one of his masterpieces. Let's get nerdy and revel in the breathtaking creativity of Jack. Kirby. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Incredible Hulk The Incredible Hulk, a superhero legend that has won many hearts, first appeared in the pages of The Incredible Hulk, number one, in May 1962. This breakthrough comic was created by Stan Lee, who collaborated with the amazing duo Jack Kirby and Paul Reinman to bring this green-skinned behemoth to life. Lee drew inspiration for the character's origin story and multifaceted identities from the classic tales of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Frankenstein, with a complex and compelling backstory that explored themes of anger, control, and the consequences of scientific experiments gone wrong. Bruce Banner oversaw the top-secret test of the Gamma Bomb. He observed that a civilian breached security and entered the restricted area. Banner ordered his colleague Starsky to evacuate the intruder to safety, but little did he know, Starsky was a Soviet spy who wanted the project to fail. When Starsky did nothing, Banner took matters into his own hands and rescued the teenager, throwing him into a protective trench before the bomb detonated. But Banner wasn't so lucky. The explosion showered him with highly charged radioactive particles, causing him to transform into a grey-skinned intelligent behemoth at sunset and revert to human form in the morning. For a brief period, Banner could control the transformations using gamma radiation projectors in his secret desert laboratory. Thor the beloved comic book superhero Thor made his initial appearance in the August 1962 edition of Journey into Mystery No. 83, thanks to the collaborative talents of writer Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby. Kirby drew inspiration from his passion for Norse mythology to seamlessly integrate this mythic hero into the Marvel Universe. Additionally, Kirby's creativity extended to the development of Thor's legendary supporting cast, which includes Jane Foster and Loki, who is one of the characters widely regarded as one of Marvel Comics' greatest supervillains and whose portrayal in the Marvel Cinematic Universe has solidified his significance. Thor's story goes something like this. Thor draws his inspiration from the Norse mythological deity of the same name. As an Asgardian god of thunder, Thor possesses a vast array of superhuman abilities that include flight and the manipulation of weather, all made possible by his enchanted hammer, Mjolnir. Notably, Thor was also a founding member of the Avengers, a group of superheroes who banded together to protect the world from evil forces. As a result of his long-standing popularity, Thor has amassed a colorful cast of supporting characters and formidable foes, which has contributed to the enduring legacy of this iconic character. Five Original X-Men and Professor X In 1963, after the success of Spider-Man, Thor and the Fantastic Four, co-creators Jack Kirby and Stan Lee aimed to invent another group of superheroes, but without having to delve into the explanation of how they gained their powers. They didn't want each character to be the result of a radioactive spider bite. This is where the concept of mutants emerged, individuals born with an extra gene that gave them their abilities. Kirby suggested that these mutants should be integrated into human society by attending school and having a teacher instead of being being shunned just for being different from normal humans. This led to the creation of the original five X-Men, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Beast, Angel, Iceman, and Professor X. It's believed that the X-Men are a symbolic representation of the civil rights movement of the time. In the early issues, the original X-Men team was introduced, which included Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Beast, Angel, and Iceman, as well as their enemy, Magneto, and his brotherhood of evil mutants, who included Mastermind, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Toad. While the comic initially focused on the classic theme of good versus evil, it later deviated into themes of prejudice and racism, which persisted throughout the series. Interestingly, the evil side of the fight was portrayed in human form and given a sympathetic narrative via Magneto, who survived Nazi concentration camps only to harbor a hatred for non-mutant humanity. Darkseid Darkseid is a supervillain in DC Comics who was created by Jack Kirby to be the main enemy in his Fourth World series. He was first seen in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen issue 134 in 1970 and later officially introduced in Forever People in 1971. Did you know that Kirby based the look of one of the most powerful villains in DC Comics 
Darkseid on actor Jack Palance. Mm. Kirby also drew inspiration from two notorious personalities, Adolf Hitler and former US President Richard Nixon, to create Darkseid's wicked and domineering persona. He's known as one of Superman's most fearsome enemies, as well as the chief adversary of the Justice League. Once known as Uxus, Darkseid is a terrifying new god and the oppressive ruler of Apocalypse. He seeks to enslave the entire multiverse and crush any semblance of hope and free will in sentient life forms. He aspires to be the universe's supreme dictator, even surpassing the godlike deity known as the Presence. Darkseid's ultimate goal is to discover the anti life equation, which will allow him to control the thoughts and emotions of all living beings. He's attempted to take over the universe before using other methods, such as through his mind controlling henchman, Glorious Godfrey. Darkseid is especially interested in Earth because he believes humans possess fragments of the anti-life equation in their minds. To uncover the equation, Darkseid plans to probe the minds of every human, which leads him into conflict with many superheroes, including Superman. Darkseid prefers to work from behind the scenes, using superpowered minions to achieve his goal, including the use of the Intergang Crime Syndicate, which later becomes a religious cult that worships him as the god of evil. Black Panther. One of the most iconic and beloved characters in the Marvel Universe almost had a completely different name. Jack Kirby's original concept art for the character used the name Cole Tiger, but beyond just his name, Black Panther's origins were influenced by a rich mix of historical and biblical figures, including Mansa Musa, 14th century sultan of the Mali Empire, Jamaican activist Marcus Garvey, and biblical figures such as Ham and Canaan. The origins of the character's creation were disputed between Kirby and Lee, with Kirby claiming sole credit for creating the character out of a desire to add diversity to his comics for humane reasons. Despite this, it's clear that Kirby played a major role in shaping the character and its stories. The debut of Black Panther in the pages of Fantastic Four No. 52 proved to be a pivotal moment in comic book history. Not only did it introduce an iconic new hero to the Marvel Universe, but it also paved the way for greater diversity in comics. T'Challa, the king and protector of Wakanda, possesses extraordinary abilities thanks to ancient rituals involving the heart-shaped herb. He's also a rationalist who relies on science and a fighter with access to advanced Wakandan technology. As one of the most popular characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Black Panther's impact on popular culture is undeniable. Captain America Captain America is among the first in the superhero world, blazing the trail for countless other Cape Crusaders to follow. The iconic character was co-created by Jack Kirby and Joe Simon back in 1941, making him one of the very first superheroes ever to grace the pages of a comic book. In fact, Captain America was so ahead of his time that his debut issue, Captain America Comics No. 1, hit newsstands months before the US even entered World War II. And what an entrance it was! The cover featured the star-spangled hero socking Hitler right in the kisser. Fast forward over 80 years, and Captain America is still a beloved symbol of justice and freedom for people around the globe. Joe Simon, the co-creator of Captain America alongside Jack Kirby, once revealed that the character was intentionally political. Simon and Kirby were disgusted by Nazi Germany's actions in the years preceding the United States' involvement in World War II, and they strongly believed that war was unavoidable. Simon explained, The opponents to the war were all quite well organized. We wanted to have our say, too. Furthermore, many have noted that Captain America's character contains various elements of Jewish iconography. Furthermore, many have noted that Captain America's character contains various elements of Jewish iconography. Steve Rogers, also known as Captain America, proudly bears the colors of the American flag and wields a nearly indestructible shield that doubles as a projectile. Rogers joined the military to serve his country during World War II and was transformed into a superhuman after receiving an experimental super soldier serum. However, as the war was in its final stages, he was trapped in ice and preserved until he was revived in the modern era. As a man out of time, Rogers faces challenges in maintaining his ideals, but he's still widely respected by the superhero community, serving as a longtime leader of the Avengers. Long before the Marvel Universe was even a thing, the iconic character made his debut in timely comics. Jack Kirby's Captain America set the standard for future Marvel characters with his patriotic motif and unwavering ideals. It wasn't until years later, in Avengers No. 4, that Captain America officially joined the Marvel Universe, but his legacy as a symbol of heroism and justice lives on. The New Gods Jack Kirby, as the creator and designer, presented the New Gods as an otherworldly species that existed within the DC Comics universe. They made their debut in the comic series New Gods No. 1 in 1971. Collectively known as Jack Kirby's Fourth World, the New Gods have become an iconic part of DC Comics mythology. Kirby first came up with the idea of the New Gods years earlier, while he was working on the tales of Asgard stories for Marvel. Originally intending to end with Ragnarok killing Thor's pantheon, he instead incorporated the idea into his Inhuman stories. Kirby's New New gods hail from two contrasting planets, 
New Genesis, a lush paradise ruled by the just High Father, and Apocalypse, a bleak, fiery wasteland ruled by the cruel dark side. Millennia ago, the planets were united as one, but after the old gods' demise during the fateful Ragnarok, Urgrund was shattered into two separate worlds. Despite their opposing natures, the face of both planets was intertwined. Do you think you know all there is about the new gods? Mm -hmm. Well, my fellow nerds and geeks, I present to you the Female Furies. The Female Furies first appeared in Mr. Miracle No. 6 in 1972. Hailing from the New Gods universe, they pledged their allegiance to the merciless Dark Side and were trained by Granny Goodness to become some of the most ruthless and loyal soldiers in his army. The impact of Kirby's Fourth World extends far beyond its initial publication, with its characters and concepts continuing to influence and shape the DC universe to this day. The iconic characters of the series, such as Steppenwolf and Dark Side, have also made appearances in popular adaptations like Zack's Snyder's Justice League, proving that Kirby's imagination still resonates with audiences today. Avengers In 1963, a team of superheroes was introduced in the Avengers issue number one. This new team, like the Justice League, was made up of characters that each had their own solo series. But what made the Avengers stand out was that they were all created by the team of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. The initial lineup contained some of Kirby's most powerful characters, including the Hulk, Thor, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. Loki, another iconic creation by Kirby, soon joined the bandwagon. Kirby's influence on the Avengers got stronger as the story progressed. He created some of the most iconic issues, introducing a host of villains and characters who were still popular. It's no surprise that Marvel's main property, the Avengers, has become the throbbing heart of the ever-expanding Marvel Cinematic Universe. Furthermore, the team has served as a portal to other Kirby creations, such as S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury. It all started with Loki, the mischievous Asgardian god who sought revenge on his brother, Thor. But in his scheming, Loki inadvertently set into motion a chain of events that would bring together a ragtag group of heroes. When teenager Rick Jones found himself caught in the middle of Loki's plot, he called upon Ant-Man, the Wasp and Iron Man to aid Thor and the Hulk, who had been unwittingly drawn into the conflict as well. As they battled against Loki's treachery, the five unlikely allies discovered that they worked together surprisingly well. And so, after emerging victorious, Ant-Man proposed that they continue fighting the forces of evil as a team. The Wasp was the one to call them the Avengers, a name that would go down in history as one of the most iconic superhero teams of all time. It just goes to show you that when you combine a multitude of superheroes, the possibilities are limitless. Silver Surfer The Silver Surfer is a beloved Marvel superhero created by none other than Jack Kirby himself. This cosmic hero originally appeared in the Fantastic Four issue number 48 in 1966 as part of a three-issue story arc dubbed by the fans as the Galactus Trilogy. The Silver Surfer is one of the most unusual and popular characters created by Jack Kirby for the Fantastic Four mythos. Stan Lee, the co-creator, was so taken with the character that he gave him his own series. The Silver Surfer was created as a companion to Galactus, the enormous villain with a never-ending hunger for worlds. Galactus, according to Lee, was developed in answer to Kirby's inquiry, what if the Fantastic Four met God? The Silver Surfer was the Marvel Universe's first real cosmic hero, venturing into the farthest regions of space. But there was one thing Kirby didn't explain, the surfboard. We must go beyond the comics for answers. Kirby's entire career was defined by his ability to identify trends and appeal to teenage culture. It's no wonder then that the surfer was an attempt to capitalize on the cool factor of the 1960s when surfing was all the rage. The Silver Circus sleek and futuristic surfboard made it relatable to the youth of the time. The dramatic tale of the surfer went like this. Norin Rad, a noble inhabitant of the planet Zenla, made a sacrifice like no other. He gave up his humanity and transformed into the Herald of Galactus. Hmm, why did he do this? It was all to save his home planet from the insatiable hunger of Galactus. Despite his selfless act, Norin Rad's life became a tragic one. He was tasked with the burden of scouting new worlds for Galactus to consume. It was a hopeless and sorrowful existence for a once free spirit, now eternally bound to a fate he never asked for. The Fantastic Four In the world of superhero teams, the Fantastic Four stands out as a true trailblazer. They burst onto the scene in 1961 with a level of realism and humanity that had never been seen before in the medium. Created by the iconic duo of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, the Fantastic Four marked a turning point in the way comics were made. Kirby's breathtaking artwork and Lee's whip-smart writing forged a new collaborative approach that set the tone for the Marvel Universe to come. What set the Fantastic Four apart from other superheroes of the time was their relatability. They were a family, flawed and dysfunctional, but united in their quest to protect the world. Their disagreements and grudges were all too familiar, making them feel like real people rather than just characters on a page. And unlike other heroes who hid behind secret identities, the Fantastic Four reveled in their celebrity status. 
They were beloved by the public. Their story revolved around the intelligent Mr. Fantastic, his faithful partner, the invisible girl, the reckless human torch, and the ever-loving thing. The Fantastic Four's impact on the comic book world arose from the richness and depth of its universe, which had villains as complex and interesting as the heroes and a willingness to try new concepts that stretched the boundaries. Commandy, in an inspired move. DC editor Carmine Infantino challenged comic book legend Jack Kirby to produce a series based on the renowned sci-fi franchise Planet of the Apes. Kirby's creative imagination was already shimmering with ideas despite not having seen the flicks. He was inspired by his own previous work, such as the pre-Planet of the Apes novella The Last Enemy and an unpublished comic strip called Commandy of the Caves from 1956. With these ideas at his disposal, Kirby set to work creating the vivid world of Commandy a post-apocalyptic future in which humans were a threatened species. It might not have achieved the same level of recognition as some of Kirby's other creations, but it remained a pure expression of Kirby's creativity, free of the constraints of a larger superhero universe. Commandy is the lone human survivor in a world overrun by mutant animals and futuristic technology, and his journey is a passionate exploration of humanity's connection to the past. Kirby skillfully weaves in elements of his fourth world universe, adding depth to Commandy's adventures, with its wild concepts and larger-than-life storytelling. Commandy represents the full realization of Kirby's artistic vision and is a true gem for fans of the legendary creator. Black Bolt This creation of the super duo Jack Kirby and Stan Lee first appeared in Fantastic Four issue 45, 1965. Did you know that his real name is Blackagar Boltagon? In the original story, he's the son of King Aegon and Queen Rinda, and possesses the extraordinary ability to manipulate electrons after being exposed to the mutagenic Terrigan Mist while he was still in his mother's womb. However, his power came at a cost. His voice was capable of causing catastrophic destruction. In order to prevent harm to the inhuman community, Black Bolt was confined within a soundproof chamber and taught to control his powers. As a young man, he returned to society but chose to remain silent, even in the face of his younger brother Maximus's attempts to provoke him into speaking. This gave him the title of The Silent King. While it's true that Black Bolt's voice can level entire cities, it's important to note that The Silent King's power isn't limited to just that. In fact, his ability to manipulate electrons is just as impressive. By controlling the particles in the air around him, Black Bolt is able to defy gravity and soar through the sky with ease. He also possesses the ability to channel his energy into a single blast known as the Force Blast. With this power, he can shoot devastating bursts of energy from his hands or tuning fork. These Force Blasts can knock out an enemy or demolish solid steel walls with ease. And if he really wants to make a statement, he can even reduce an entire truck to nothing more than a pile of smoldering rubble. Ant-Man Ant-Man, one of Marvel's earliest superheroes, was brought to life by the creative trio of Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, and Jack Kirby in 1962. Initially, Ant-Man was a secret identity adopted by the brilliant scientist Hank Pym, who created a substance that could alter his size. However, over the years, the Ant-Man persona was taken up by reformed criminals Scott Lang and Eric O'Grady as well. Hank Pym eventually ditched the Ant-Man moniker for other superhero identities like Giant Man, Goliath, and Yellow Jacket. Hank Pym, a biophysicist, was a man on a mission after the tragic death of his wife. Determined to fight injustice, Pym developed a revolutionary chemical substance known as Pym Particles. With the ability to alter his size, Pym also invented a special helmet that could communicate and control ants. Pym's new persona, Ant-Man, became a crime-solving mystery man, using his insect-sized powers to stop criminals and bring justice to the world. Did you know that the original Ant-Man, Dr. Pym was not only one of the founding members of the Avengers, but also the creator of one of their most difficult foes, Ultron. Yep, the very same artificial intelligence that's caused the team so much trouble over the years was initially designed by Pym as a means of helping humanity. Bucky Barnes James Buchanan Bucky Barnes is a classic Marvel character that's been around for decades. He made his first appearance as the sidekick to the iconic Captain America in the very first issue of Captain America Comics 1941. Created by the legendary comic book duo Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, Bucky quickly became a fan favorite and an integral part of the Captain America mythos. When Joe Simon first drew his iconic character Captain America for Timely Comics in 1940, he decided to give him a young, plucky sidekick. Simon named the character Bucky after his real-life friend Bucky Pearson, who was a standout player on their high school basketball team. Bucky Barnes quickly became an integral part of the Captain America mythos, fighting alongside him in World War II and beyond. When Steve Rogers, the first Captain America, was stationed at a base, Bucky was the camp mascot. However, 
Bucky's fate changed when he stumbled upon Steve changing into the Captain America costume, forcing Steve to take him on as a sidekick. Bucky fought alongside Captain America during World War II until their last mission together. In an attempt to sabotage a drone bomb headed for the US, Bucky and Captain America were caught in the explosion. While Captain America was later discovered alive after being frozen in ice for decades, Bucky was believed to have died in the explosion. Interestingly, Bucky's death was later revealed to be a cover-up by the army press. In reality, he survived the drone explosion but lost his left arm and a significant portion of his memories. Despite being submerged in the Atlantic Ocean, he was eventually rescued by a Russian submarine that hoped to find Captain America for the Allies. Although he lost his personal memories, he retained his combat skills and knowledge of several languages, which made him a perfect candidate for the Soviets to turn him into an assassin known as the Winter Soldier. Dessard. Dessard, a notorious supervillain in DC Comics, is a loyal follower of Darkseid, hailing from the desolate planet of Apocalypse. Created by Jack Kirby as a part of the Fourth World Meta series, he first appeared in Forever People issue number 2, 1971. Dessard, the high priest of torture on the hellish planet of Apocalypse, holds a sinister position as one of Darkseid's most loyal and cunning lieutenants, leading the brutal parademon armies alongside Steppenwolf. Interestingly, Dessard's path to evil began in his youth, when Darkseid, then known as Euxus, corrupted the innocent boy's soul, binding him forever to the service of the Dark Lord. Despite his cowardly nature, Dessard possesses a clever and twisted mind, using his intelligence to create devastating weapons and devise diabolical methods of torture for his master's enemies and prisoners. While he originally took on a human appearance, the DC Comics New 52 reboot brought about a transformation in both his appearance and abilities. Annihilus Annihilus is one of the lesser-known characters in the Marvel Universe. He first appeared in Fantastic Four Annual Issue 6, 1968, and was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Here's what we know about the origins of Annihilus. The Tianans, a semi-humanoid species from the Negative Zone, seeded life spores on uninhabited and arid worlds. One of their ships crashed into the volcanic planet Arthras, where the spores evolved into weak insectoid creatures. A strange mutation gave one of them significant intelligence, and he used a helmet for knowledge transference to mask Tianan technology. This creature was none other than Annihilus. He became obsessed with survival and destroyed any potential threat to his existence. Annihilus dominated other life forms on Atheros and neighboring worlds. He created a cosmic control rod, which enhanced his intelligence and strength. Annihilus, who is now the tyrant ruler of the Negative Zone, came face to face with the Fantastic Four when they ventured into his domain in search of a cure for Sue's complicated pregnancy. The insectoid creature's puppets attacked the heroes, but they managed to snatch Annihilus's cosmic control rod. The Fantastic Four escaped back to Earth, leaving Annihilus fuming with anger and seeking revenge. With his ongoing quest to conquer and dominate the Negative Zone and beyond, Annihilus remains a grave threat to the Marvel Universe. Abominable Snowman Threat History Mankind has been captivated by the enigmatic creature that roams the frigid terrain, whose intentions toward humanity remain shrouded in mystery. However, comic book enthusiasts in the 1960s were finally provided with some insight into the elusive abominable snowman through the pages of Tales to Astonish issue 13, penned by comic legends Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Steve Ditko. Here's what the original story tells us from the icy world of comics. The abominable snowman was a legendary creation of two iconic comic book artists, Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. The story began with the greedy explorer Carl Hansen, who sought to capture the elusive snowman and make a fortune. However, his desire for riches led him to steal a cursed photograph that slowly transformed him into the very creature he sought to capture. Over time, the snowman became a resident of the monstrous realm known as Monster Isle, where he grew in size and ferocity. Witnessing the arrival of the X-Men Shadowcat and Magic, the Snowman and other beasts attacked the heroes, only to be thwarted by Magic's teleportation. Later, the Snowman joined forces with monsters summoned by Kid Kaiju, helping to defeat the Leviathan Mother and its army in the epic Monsters Unleashed storyline. The Snowman legend is so entrenched that numerous variations have arisen, each one contributing an extra spine-chilling element to the already frightful wintry nights. Cyclops Cyclops, commonly known as Scott Summers, is a Marvel comic superhero who was a founding member of the X-Men. He was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and debuted in the X-Men No. 1 in 1963. Lee has voiced his affection for the character, identifying Cyclops and Beast as his two favorite X-Men because of their reputation as tortured heroes who fight with power control. The terrible origin story of Cyclops, the loss of his parents in a plane crash, is an important component of his character. He and his brother were orphaned and separated, but Cyclops' powers manifested and he became a wanderer until Professor Xavier took him in as a ward. Cyclops stands out to Xavier, who sees him as a treasured pupil and even a surrogate son. While Cyclops' devotion to 
Xavier has tested his relationships with others at times, he's emerged as a strong and confident leader in his own right, embodying Xavier's ideals of a world in which mutants and humans can coexist peacefully. Jack Kirby often depicted him as the quintessential hero of classic American pop culture, in contrast to the rebellious, anti-authoritarian anti-heroes that gained popularity after the Vietnam War. Mr. Miracle Mr. Miracle is a character in DC Comics, appearing in various versions throughout its history. The first version of Mr. Miracle, known as Scott Free, was created by Jack Kirby and debuted in Mr. Miracle issue 1, 1971. Kirby had originally intended to be a creative supervisor and not a regular writer-artist at DC Comics. After creating Mr. Miracle, he planned to hand the series over to another creator after a few issues. However, Carmine Infantino, the publisher of DC at the time, disagreed and insisted that Kirby should continue to handle the series himself. As a fan of Kirby's work, I'm glad that Infantino made that decision. Let's take a closer look at Scott Free, aka Mr. Miracle's rise to popularity. Scott, the son of Highfather who ruled New Genesis, was meant to be a peace offering in exchange of Darkseid's son, Orion. But instead of being raised in paradise, he was brought up in the harsh environment of Apocalypse. Despite being trained as a soldier for Darkseid, Scott was taught rebellion and advanced technology, as well as meeting the fierce warrior Big Barda. After escaping to Earth, he assumed the identity of the escape artist Thaddeus Brown, also known as Mr. Miracle after Brown's murder. Oberon, Brown's friend, became Scott's companion in his adventures. Absorbing Man Absorbing Man first appeared in the comic book Journey into Mystery, issue 114, in March 1965, which was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. He was also featured as late as 2017 in the Black Bolt series, written by Saladin Ahmed. At first, Kirby made sure Crusher Creel had a pretty typical criminal life, always getting caught for minor crimes. Despite having a short stint as a boxer, he mostly relied on small-time illegal activities. His luck ran out when he was convicted of assault and landed in prison, but it was there that his life took a strange turn. Loki, the mischievous Asgardian god, saw an opportunity and gave Creel an enchanted potion that turned him into a powerful being. With newfound abilities to absorb anything he touched, Creel took on the name Absorbing Man and soon found himself battling Thor. It was a fight like no other, as Creel discovered he could absorb the power of Thor's hammer and even Thor himself. The once common criminal had become a deadly opponent, forcing Thor to retreat. In a last-ditch effort to defeat Creel, Thor used his hammer's powers to transform the ground's molecular makeup, tricking the Absorbing Man into changing his atomic structure into pure healing. With his feet off the ground, Creel helplessly drifted into the atmosphere. His powers were rendered useless against the power of Thor's hammer. Eternals The Eternals A fictional humanoid race created by Jack Kirby in 1976 are widely known among the nerds from the 70s to Gen Z. They were created by the Celestials a million years ago as an offshoot of humanity known as Homo Immortalis, with the purpose of defending Earth using their superhuman abilities. Despite their godlike powers, the Eternals have mostly kept to themselves and inspired various mythological figures across different cultures in the Marvel Universe. The Eternals of Earth have undergone two devastating civil wars, but they've chosen a peaceful path dedicated to self-improvement and bettering their society. The Unimind, an impressive entity created by combining the will power and intelligence of several Eternals showcases their remarkable feats. On a side note, in 1970, Jack Kirby left Marvel Comics to join DC Comics, where he created the epic saga of the New Gods, exploring themes of morality, power, and identity through an unforgettable cast of characters. Despite Kirby's grand vision, the New Gods were cancelled, leaving fans and Kirby himself disappointed. Kirby returned to Marvel and continued to express his passion for high-concept science fiction through The Eternals, further solidifying his reputation as one of the greatest comic book creators in history. Beast X-Men Stan Lee wrote in the preface to X-Men The Ultimate Guide that he made Beast the most well-read, eloquent and articulate of all the X-Men. That's the kind of admiration the original X-Men received. Beast was created by writer Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby. Beast first appeared in X-Men issue 1, 1963. Let's find out what exactly Beast is all about. Hank McCoy, better known as The Beast, was initially introduced as a mutant with remarkable physical abilities, despite his ordinary appearance and speech. However, over time, he underwent a transformation that saw him gain unique animalistic features such as blue fur, fangs, claws, and pointed ears, making him one of the most unique-looking members of the X-Men. As his physical strength and senses grew to even greater levels, the contrast between his brutish exterior and his intellectual, well-spoken manner made him one of the most intriguing characters in the X-Men. During his scene a year. Hank's remarkable reflexes and abilities made him a standout football player, but it wasn't just his performance on the field that caught people's attention. 
One day, during a game, Hank displayed his heroic qualities by stopping a group of robbers who were trying to make their escape across the football field. Unfortunately, Hank's bravery also made him a target. The villainous conquistador kidnapped Hank's parents, hoping to blackmail the young mutant into working for him. But Hank wasn't one to be intimidated. He refused to cooperate and instead called upon the X-Men for help. With the X-Men's assistance, Hank was able to rescue his parents and defeat the evil guy. Impressed with Hank's courage and mutant abilities, Professor Charles Xavier invited him to join the team of teenage mutant heroes and enroll in the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. And that, my fellow nerds, is how the Beast became a part of the original five X-Men. Nick Fury Another one of Kirby's most popular creations is Nick Fury. The tough-talking sergeant made his debut in the World War II combat series Sergeant Fury and His Howling Commandos in 1963. This cigar-chomping, non-commissioned officer was in charge of an elite unit that was unique for its racial and ethnic diversity. After his time with the Howling Commandos, Fury was tapped by Tony Stark and the board of directors of the newly formed SHIELD, a top-secret international espionage organization. As the director of SHIELD, Fury faced his old enemy from World War II, Baron Von Strucker, who had become the Supreme Hydra. This ignited a Cold War between the two organizations, which eventually led to a showdown on Hydra Island. Fury dealt a near-fatal blow to Hydra by sinking their base with its leader, Von Strucker, trapped inside the atomic core. Fury left him for dead, but as we all know, villains have a tendency to come back from the dead. Galactus in terms of the highest levels of Marvel's hierarchy of power, many would likely consider Galactus to be the most dominant being in the universe. And I don't see a reason why they shouldn't. Let's talk about one of Kirby's most powerful creations. Once a mere mortal, this being has transcended to become a cosmic entity that feeds on planets to maintain its life force. In fact, his existence plays a pivotal role in preserving the primary Marvel Universe. This character was brought to life by the creative minds of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and made his debut on the pages of Fantastic Four issue 48 in 1966. Lee and Kirby sought to create a character that defied the conventional villain form. When Galactus first graced the pages of Fantastic Four, he was portrayed as a deity-like entity who sustained his existence by draining the life force of entire planets, displaying complete disregard for mortal morality or judgment. When the Fantastic Four first faced off against Galactus and his Herald, they weren't just up against any ordinary villain. This cosmic duo permanently shifted the scale of what the Fantastic Four could handle, raising the stakes to an unprecedented level. Unlike previous enemies, Galactus wasn't just powerful. He was a godlike entity, and he operated beyond the scope of traditional superhero ethics. By challenging the Fantastic Four in this way, Galactus and his Herald opened up new avenues for Marvel storytelling that hadn't been explored before. Etrigan the Demon. In 1972, Jack Kirby created Etrigan the Demon for DC Comics, a character who defies traditional hero-villain labels. Despite his demonic origins and violent tendencies, Etrigan has often found himself on the side of the heroes in the DC Universe due to his connection with his human host, Jason Blood. Interestingly, Etrigan's creation wasn't a product of Kirby's personal interests, but rather a response to DC's need for a horror character. Despite Kirby's initial annoyance, the first issue of The Demon sold so well that DC demanded 16 issues, causing Kirby to abandon his Fourth World titles. Even though less popular, Etrigan has one of the most fascinating backstories. Etrigan the Demon is not your average anti-hero. Born as the son of the demon Belial, he was summoned by his half-brother Merlin in an attempt to gain Etrigan's secrets. However, Merlin was unsuccessful and instead decided to bind the demon with a knight named Jason Blood, rendering him immortal. Jason viewed his immortality as both a penance and a curse. In modern times, Jason Blood resurfaces as a prominent demonologist in Gotham City. After discovering a poem in the crypt of Merlin, he unwittingly switches places with Etrigan, causing him to transform into the demon. To make matters worse, Morgan Le Fay, a long-lived antagonist who desires Merlin's secrets, follows him leading to Etrigan's first major battle. Despite his violent tendencies, Etrigan has worked alongside Earth's heroes and clashed with them, guided only by his own whims and Jason's attempts to use his infernal power for good. Enchantress Enchantress is a name that belongs to not just one, but two characters in Marvel Comics. The first is Amora, a fierce sorceress and one of the arch-nemesis of Thor. Her mastery of the arcane arts is second to none, and she uses it to weave intricate spells and manipulate reality to her advantage. The second Enchantress, on the other hand, is a young girl named Sylvie Lushton. She was granted incredible mystic powers by the trickster god Loki, who created her as a tool for chaos. Sylvie takes inspiration from Amora and models herself after her, hoping to one day become just as powerful and feared. In her Marvel Universe debut, Amora made a splash in Journey into Mystery issue 103, 1964. She's a powerful Asgardian femme fatale who wields seductive powers to manipulate men and get what she wants. Although she has a strong affinity for magic, it's her cunning and manipulative tactics that make her one of Thor's most dangerous adversaries. In her first appearance, 
appearance, she attempted to lure Thor away from his love interest, Jane Foster, but ultimately failed to break their bond. Magneto Magneto, the master of magnetism, is one of the most complex and compelling characters in the Marvel Universe, with a rich history and motivations that continue to evolve over time. Magneto is a mutant with an extraordinary ability to manipulate magnetic fields. He first appeared in the X-Men issue 1 in 1963 and was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. According to Lee, Magneto wasn't a villain. He just wanted to fight back against the bigotry and racism that mutants faced in society. Writer Chris Claremont drew inspiration from Menachem Begin, the Israeli Prime Minister, who went from being a terrorist to winning the Nobel Peace Prize. While some see Magneto as a symbol of Malcolm X, Claremont found the comparison presumptuous, given his own background as an immigrant white. Magneto, aka Eric Lenscher, was created with the belief that mutants are superior to humans and that coexisting peacefully with humans is an impossibility. Initially, he aimed to conquer the world to establish mutants whom he referred to as Homo superior as the dominant species. However, over time, his character's origins and motivations have been further developed, revealing that his experiences as a Holocaust survivor have shaped his radical methods and negative philosophy. He's determined to protect mutants from suffering the same fate as he did in a world that fears and persecutes them. Machine Man Marvel's loss of the license to publish comic book adaptations of 2001 A Space Odyssey led them to create their own unique character for the Marvel Universe, the Machine Man, an android superhero also known as X-51. The character was given his own series, which became popular among comic book enthusiasts for its striking artwork by Jack Kirby. Machine Man's backstory is equally fascinating, as he was the only surviving member of a series of android robots who was raised by a scientist named Abel Stack as his own human son. Abel Stack lost his life while removing his auto-destruct mechanism but Machine Man's evolution towards sentience was not yet complete. It was further triggered by a mysterious monolith. In July 1977, Jack Kirby wrote and illustrated the first appearance of Machine Man in 2001 A Space Odyssey, issue number 8, where the character was referred to as Mr. Machine. Following this, Machine Man was given his own series in 1978. Machine Man's tale went something like this. Raised by Abel Stack who treated him as his own son and gave him a human mask to wear, X-51 was exposed to a monolith from 2001 that further evolved him into sentience. When Stack died trying to protect him, X-51 took on the name Aaron Stack and broke out of confinement, but soon found himself being hunted down by the army. To learn more about humanity and the world he was then a part of, the newly named Machine Man sought out contact with humans while on the run. Peggy Carter Dr. Margaret Elizabeth Peggy Carter was an exceptional agent of the Strategic Scientific Reserve who made her mark during and after the Second World War. She was one of the founders of S.H.I.E.L.D. Within the pages of Captain America comics, you'll often find the fearless Peggy Carter standing alongside our hero. She was brought to life by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, making her first appearance as a love interest of Steve Rogers in flashbacks set during World War II in Tales of Suspense issue 75, though she remained nameless at the time. In later years, Peggy became more recognized as a member of the Carter family, with Sharon Carter being one of her relatives. Peggy Carter is a true icon and a testament to the power of female heroes in comics. Sharon Carter Sharon Carter is a badass secret agent and ex-field agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. who made her first appearance in Tales of Suspense, issue 75, 1966. Created by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby and Dick Ayres, Sharon is also known as Agent 13 and is a love interest of the legendary Captain America, Steve Rogers. Initially portrayed as Peggy Carter's younger sister, she was later retconned as Peggy's grand niece. Her impressive skills and quick thinking were put to the test when she was tasked with going undercover as a nurse and living next to Rogers. She later fought Hydra during the battle at the Triskelion. Galleon. After the Hydra uprising, Carter left S.H.I.E.L.D. and joined the CIA, where she was stationed at the Joint Counter-Terrorist Center. Following the Vienna International Center bombing, she assisted Rogers with information on Bucky Barnes, and when Barnes was arrested and brought to the JCTC, she was unable to stop Helmut Zemo from reactivating his mental programming. Eventually, she helped Rogers hand over his team's equipment, which would indirectly lead to the catastrophic Avengers Civil War. Morgan Edge Morgan Edge, originally a supporting character, was a media tycoon who took over the Daily Planet and hired Clark Kent as a journalist. Following the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, the DC Universe underwent a major overhaul, and one of the notable changes made was to transform the character into an enemy of Superman and a prominent member of the Intergang organization. In Jimmy Olsen, issue 133, the character created by the legendary Jack Kirby made his debut. Kirby's inspiration for the character's physical appearance was actor Kevin McCarthy, while his personality was based on television executive James T. Aubrey. 
This character was designed to represent organized crime infiltrating corporate America, specifically a massive media conglomerate. Kirby's satire was a commentary on the acquisition of Warner Brothers and DC by a dubious company, making it somewhat of an inside joke. In his youth, Morgan Edge had a moment of anger and shouted his hatred for his father to the skies. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning crashed down and revealed the intimidating visage of the god of apocalypse, Darkseid. The deity offered to aid Morgan in becoming a brave and powerful individual, and the two formed a strange connection that persisted into Morgan's adult years. The details of their relationship remain shrouded in mystery, but it's clear that Darkseid continued to exert his influence over Morgan Edge's life. Kang the Conqueror Kang, also known as Nathaniel Richards, is a time-traveling villain who originally debuted in Fantastic Four issue 19 in the form of Nathaniel Richards. Nathaniel Richards was a 31st century academic and Reed Richards' father descendant who became obsessed with history and discovered time-traveling technology. He traveled back in time to ancient Egypt, becoming a pharaoh, Rama Tut, and claiming Ensabar Nur as his heir. He was vanquished by the Fantastic Four and traveled ahead to the 20th century, where he met Doctor Doom and built Doom's armor. He then transformed into the Scarlet Centurion, pitting the Avengers against their alternate reality counterparts. After conquering a war-torn future globe and opting to take over an earlier, more fertile Earth, Nathaniel became Kang the Conqueror. Sitarak Sitarak is the Lord of Oblivion who empowers Juggernaut, but do you know who else draws his magic from this Marvel villain? It's none other than Doctor Strange. Sitarak was mentioned in two separate comics before he made his actual physical appearance for the first time in 1988 in Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, number 44, The Color Crimson. He was created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee to look like a mighty sorcerer with a ruby attached to his forehead, which seemed like his source of power. He was worshipped by many as a demon and a god, but was ultimately exiled to a timeless dimension called the Crimson Cosmos, where the Satora continued to worship him, and his superpowers remained intact. Being an almighty deity, Sitarak had abilities to execute his powers across dimensions, which is how Doctor Strange invokes the Crimson Bands of Sitarak to bind his enemies with red bands. Sitarak also created the Crimson Gem of Sitarak, which could transform a human into a juggernaut if they came into contact with it. Guess now we know how Juggernaut came into being. Additionally, the Juggernaut could also exercise the powers of Sitarak. Sitarak went on to appear in several comics across the Marvel Universe, becoming a prominent adversary to all the Marvel heroes. Granny Goodness Jack Kirby created the cruel psychic of Darkseid, Granny Goodness. Contrary to her name, Granny Goodness was wicked, evil, and merciless. She debuted in May 1971 in Mr. Miracle No. 2, using her brainwashed and coerced soldiers to attack Mr. Miracle. Granny Goodness ran an orphanage which she used as a front to torture and indoctrinate the innocent to be the Darkseid's warriors. Granny Goodness is said to have the new god physiology, which gives her super strength, hyper speed, and high intellectual capacity. She's invulnerable and has some killer reflexes. Not only that, but also she doesn't age. Granny Goodness has some form of immortality that stops her from aging. However, she can die in combat. What's interesting is that Granny Goodness herself was taken away from her peasant-class parents to be trained as one of Darkseid's hounds. During this course, she perfectly coached a dog to obey Darkseid's every command without questioning. As a test, Darkseid asked the dog to kill Goodness and he attacked her without hesitation. But Goodness killed him instead. Darkseid was impressed by Goodness and gave her the command of his army, making her one of DC's deadliest female villains. Doctor Doom A scientist, an intellectual, and a sorcerer is not a combination you want to face. Yet, Marvel superheroes have been challenged by Doctor Doom time and again. Jack Kirby and Stan Lee created Dr. Victor Von Doom to portray death itself. He was adorned with an iron mask that merged with his flesh because Doom put it on before it cooled down completely and a cape that offered him a notorious look. Dr. Doom first appeared in April 1962 in Fantastic Four No. 5 to seek revenge on his arch-nemesis Reed Richards, whom Doom blamed for disfiguring his face. Richard and Victor were peers once but didn't exactly meet eye to eye. Victor tried an experiment to bring back the dead using a machine that malfunctioned and blasted, scarring Victor's face and making him bitter and vengeful. Doom is trained in martial arts, pushing his body to extremities, making himself agile, fast, and built to withstand physical attacks. His super intelligence is his biggest superpower, which he's used to create several weapons, including his titanium armor, which is equipped with electrical shock waves, jetpacks, force fields, infrared visions, and more. Doctor Doom is among Marvel's brilliant supervillains, and is often ranked among the top five villains in comic books. Groot I am Groot Before Vin Diesel voiced this famous Marvel tree, Groot had become a favorite among comic book fans. He was created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and made his debut in the 1960s comics Tales to Astonish, number 13. The name Groot was adopted from the Greek word for something enormous with the ability to grow. Groot originated from Planet X and belongs to the floral colossi species, which was ruled by the Abhor Masters. 
After killing a fellow sapling for ill-treating a maintenance mammal, Groot was banished from the planet and he went on a galaxy's exploring mission. During one of these expeditions, he met the raccoon, Rocket, and they became inseparable. Groot's abilities have been explored and witnessed by fans through the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. His wooden exterior offers him strength, durability, and stamina to keep fighting the enemies. He expanded and stretched out his branches many folds to encompass all the Guardians when their ship collapsed to the ground. He also is seemingly immortal, with regenerative abilities to regrow as a sprig each time. But what we may have overlooked is Groot's power to transform his hands or branches into blade-like weapons. Groot is indeed a marvelous character, isn't he? Fin Fang Foom Jack Kirby and Stan Lee based Fin Fang Foom's character on an alien dragon who can also shapeshift. The villainous monster first appeared in the 1961 comic Strange Tales No. 89, where he destroyed a Chinese communist camp after being awakened. Fin Fang Foom hailed from a world called Kakaranthara, which gave him his superpowers. This McLuhan alien has fought several Marvel superheroes, including Thor and Hulk. He had immense strength, durability, and stamina, which kept him going even when the entire Justice League of America tried to hold him back. Fin Fang Foom has lived for over a thousand years, and even when Mandarin and Iron Man combined their forces to wipe him out, his spirit settled in a small statue of a dragon, keeping him alive. With shape-shifting abilities, the McLuhan can transform into a human and use his disguise to create chaos or stay hidden. Fin Fang Foom can promptly regenerate any part of his injured body and can also absorb energy or nukes to convert them into a giant ball of fire and send it hurling back to his enemies. Another exciting ability that Dragon enjoys is transforming objects and life forms by shooting beams with his eyes. Seems like one tough guy to beat. Loki, Marvel. Is he a hero or a villain? We've all been confused about Loki stand, but I think we can all agree that he has some good in him. Loki Laufeysen was penciled by Jack Kirby and created by Stan Lee to be Odin's adopted son, filled with jealousy and contempt for his brother, Thor. Loki made his debut in Venus No. 6, The Earth is in Danger, where Venus and Loki faced each other. He's a sorcerer who uses magic to play evil pranks on his enemies, including Thor. Hence, he earned the title of God of Mischief. Loki was the biological son of frost giant King Laufey, but was the tiniest among all the giants. Moreover, he possessed attributes of Asgardians, his adoptive home. Loki's ability to wield magic gave him several advantages, including regenerative powers, teleportation, and psionics, where he could project his thoughts across dimensions. He could also fool his nemesis by projecting himself and creating multiple Lokis to confuse people. He can also shapeshift, often using it to manipulate people to do his bidding and transform objects. The list of Loki's abilities is endless, but perhaps his biggest superpower is his high intelligence, which is why he felt that he should be the rightful king of Asgard. Juggernaut We already know how Juggernaut transformed from an ordinary human into a superhuman by touching the crimson gem of Sitarak. Kane Marco's transformation to Juggernaut was ideated by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee to appear for the first time in the X-Men number 12 in July 1965. The term Juggernaut means something big, like an overwhelming force, which is precisely how this supervillain was designed. Juggernaut, aka Kane Marco, was Charles Xavier's stepbrother. Kane's father was an alcoholic who abused him and preferred his stepson Charles over him. Kane grew up to hate Charles and his abilities. So, once Kane transformed into the Juggernaut, guess who he went after first? Of course, it was the X-Men. Juggernaut is a superhuman with unmatchable strength. We've seen him break through wall after wall with ease. Additionally, he has exceptional stamina and overwhelming force, making him unstoppable, which often gave the X-Men a tough time. Moreover, Juggernaut has the power of willingly summoning and taking off his armor, which most movies seem to have skipped. Like Loki, Juggernaut too has had a change of heart time and again, but he keeps returning to do Sitarak's bidding. He has his weaknesses, but it takes an entire team of X-Men to stop him. Ego the living planet. Jack Kirby wanted to explore the many fascinating aspects of the universe. Together with Stan Lee, he created Ego, the living planet, which made its debut in Thor number 132, Rigel, where God may fear to tread, in 1966. Egros was a scientist who tried to hide his race near the core of their planet, which was threatened by the stranger's experiment to go nova. But before Egros could hide himself, the sun went nova, and instead of destroying everything on the planet, it bound Egros to every living form that the sun had killed, thus creating Ego, the living planet. Since Ego was technically a scientist, he possessed immense knowledge that allowed him to create humanoid-like antibodies, which he wanted to use to conquer other universes. Ego has powers to transform his atmosphere and everything in his biosphere to use it to his advantage. Along with surface manipulation, he can even create an avatar of himself or transform into a humongous face. Ego is a master creator who can make beings from his planetary matter and communicate telepathically with them using his psionic abilities. He draws power from other nearby sources to fuel himself. Interestingly, Ego also has a digestive system through which he absorbs energy from living beings by digesting them. 
Dr. Druid. Dr. Druid, the monster hunter, was penned by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby to be a psychiatrist turned mystic who would protect people from monsters and other threats. Dr. Druid first appeared as Dr. Anthony Droom in the 1961 comic Amazing Adventures No. 1. After a series of character changes, the name Dr. Druid was adopted. Dr. Druid sought to learn the mystic ways of the Tibetan monks and met a lama, who was, in reality, the Ancient One. He gained knowledge on how to manipulate matter and perform high-scale hypnosis, which he used to make the Atlanteans believe that there was no human life above water. He developed psionic proficiencies, which helped him read people while also projecting his thoughts into others. Dr. Druid often protected Earth from alien invasions, making them believe that Earth was too strong to conquer using his telepathic powers. Although he isn't a sorcerer like Doctor Strange, Doctor Druid sure has the exceptional abilities of a superhero. He was seen fighting abreast with the Avengers, though he left them behind for the seductress Ravona. Later, he became a part of a team called the Monster Hunters to continue saving the day. Executioner Scourge, aka the Executioner, was a half-giant from Jotunheim and Thor's archenemy, created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. Scourge made his entry into Marvel in Journey into Mystery number 103 in 1964. He wields a double-bladed axe using magic and his superhuman abilities. Scourge's father was a storm giant, while his mother was an Asgardian, giving him the best of both genetics. Initially, Scourge was an Asgardian warrior who fought against the storm giants and earned his nickname, the Executioner. He fell madly in love with the seductress and enchantress Amora, who manipulated him and made him take up arms against Thor and the Avengers time and again. Even Loki has used the Executioner to fight his battles. With genetics from two powerful realms, Scourge has superhuman strength, stamina, and durability. His giant blood gives him dense muscles and body tissue, adding to his strength. Although a half-giant, the Executioner possesses super speed and excellent agility to deflect his enemy's advances. The Executioner also has the ability to use magical spells to bind his nemesis, but his favorite weapon is the double-bladed axe, which gives him an upper hand in combat. And he also ages slowly, like most Asgardians we know. Jane Foster Dr. Jane Foster is a physician, an ordinary human who transforms into a superhero and Thor's ex-girlfriend. Jane was co-created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and made her first appearance in Journey into Mystery No. 84. She gains Thor's powers after Mjolnir calls out to her when Thor is deemed unworthy and transforms into a superhero. But Jane suffers from breast cancer, and each time she uses Mjolnir to become Thor, the chemotherapy drugs are washed out of her while the cancer continues growing. Thereon, she appears in different comics as Thor and as Valkyrie. As Thor, Jane gains all his superpowers, including wielding the power of lightning and thunder. She possesses superhuman strength, stamina, and hyperspeed. Additionally, as a Valkyrie, she's gifted with a superior vision, which helps her detect hidden enemies and also the spirits of the dead. She can travel across dimensions through teleportation. In the comics, Jane dies after returning to her human form, trying to fight Mangog. But Odin and Odinson, aka X-Thor, bring her back to life. She then focuses on her treatment while asking Odinson to reclaim the name Thor and continue to protect the Nine Realms. Hela. Creators Stan Lee and Jack Kirby presented Hela in the comics as the daughter of Loki from a different incarnation and sorceress Anger Boda, a giantess from Jotunheim. However, in the Thor Ragnarok movie, she is known as Odin's firstborn child, who he keeps hidden from others after she turns evil. Guess now we know why she's more like Loki than Odin. Hela was first seen in Journey into Mystery No. 102 and since has fought not just Thor, but also the X-Men. She was made the goddess of death by Odin, who gave her control of spirits in the Hel and Niflheim realms. But Hela wanted more. She strived to get her hands on the Asgardian souls in Valhalla, especially that of Odin and Thor. Being in charge of spirits, one of Hela's most significant powers is necromancy. She uses her magic for multiple purposes, from firing deadly energy bolts from her hands to creating illusions like Loki. Moreover, she has the Asgardian power of immortality, which slows down her aging substantially. She also possesses superhuman strength, durability, stamina, and speed, along with the ability to heal faster than most. Hela is undoubtedly one of the scariest nemesis of Thor. Heimdall Heimdall was a character created by Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, and Larry Leiber, based on the Norse god of the same name. He first appeared in the 1962 comic Journey into Mystery, number 85, where he was tricked into freeing Loki from his tree-bound prison by shedding a tear. Heimdall is the sole guardian and protector of the Bifrost, which serves as a teleportation medium for the Asgardians. But more importantly, Heimdall is gifted with supernatural vision and hearing abilities, which he uses to watch over and listen to everything that's going on across the Nine Realms. It's never easy to cheat Heimdall's watchful eyes, yet Loki has managed to hoodwink him by turning into a snake. Heimdall also has super strength, speed, durability, and stamina like most Asgardians. Additionally, he has excellent reflexes, which enable him to protect Asgard and prove a worthy warrior. Heimdall also enjoys the Asgardian powers of slow aging and rapid healing. And as seen in the movie, 
he could project himself to Thor and show him what was happening in Asgard. In Thor Ragnarok, Heimdall's sole duty is towards Asgard, and he's equipped with excellent combat skills to be the first line of defense. Iceman Marvel Iceman, aka Robert Drake or Bobby, was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby to be a gay superhero who joined the X-Men. He made his debut in the X-Men No. 1 in 1963 and was designed to be the stark opposite of the Human Torch. Iceman is a mutant with the ability to manipulate water and use its frozen form to his advantage. Bobby was recruited by Charles Xavier after he had a scuffle with his school peers where he unwittingly revealed his powers and was deemed a threat. Professor X trained Bobby, who joined the team of X-Men to fight evil. Iceman is seen as an Omega-class mutant with limitless potential. Besides using ice to create weapons and force fields, Iceman can also turn himself into crystalline ice by lowering his internal and external body temperature. In his crystalline form, Iceman gains enhanced thermal vision. As we mentioned, Iceman's powers are limitless because he can manipulate moisture from the air. He also possesses the ability to create a snowstorm or a blizzard and can also make ice clones of himself. Although he can't fly, he uses an ice platform to lift him off the ground and slide him across faster. Jean Grey Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's Jean Grey was popularly known as Marvel Girl in the X-Men universe. She had powerful psionic abilities that qualified her to be an Omega-level mutant. Jean Grey was first seen in X-Men No. 1, where Charles Xavier recruited her into his team. Jean's latent mutant abilities came to power when she faced the loss of her best friend. She's a telepath with telekinetic skills, which enables her to communicate and manipulate people as well as objects. But she was too powerful for anyone to handle, so Charles Xavier put mental blocks in her so she could learn to control her abilities gradually. We've also seen Jean's reincarnated form as the Dark Phoenix, who went against the X-Men, unleashing the full force of her powers and becoming almost unbeatable. Jean has died several times in the Marvelverse, only to be reborn as a more powerful version. She went from being an underrated X-Man to the most dominant and formidable among them. With unprecedented powers, Jean has been on both sides of the coin as a superhero and a supervillain. But what some fans may have overlooked is that Jean is also a trained pilot and can fight without using her abilities. High Evolutionary The High Evolutionary was a student from Oxford named Herbert Edgar Wyndham, who was co-created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. Herbert was passionate about understanding more about human biology and genetics, so much so that his experiments led him to make a serum that he used to transform animals into human-like creatures with higher intelligence. He called these his new men. The serum also altered Herbert into the High Evolutionary. The High Evolutionary's first appearance was in Thor number 134, although he was mentioned in an earlier edition. He's so-called because his evolution was sped up by an evolutionary accelerator machine, which also enabled him with superhuman abilities like super strength, high intelligence, and extreme durability. The High Evolutionary has an armor that gives him quick healing abilities and can wield force fields. He can stay in his astral projected form for a prolonged period of time and can also levitate himself. Herbert is credited for creating Spider-Woman, aka Jessica Drew, whom he injected with a spider serum mixed with his technology when she fell sick. The High Evolutionary has posed a threat to many Marvel superheroes, including Hulk and Thor. Hercules Marvel Inspired by the Greek mythological character Heracles, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee created Hercules, the son of Zeus and a mortal woman whom Zeus tricked and seduced. Although Hercules debuted in the Avengers No. 10, he was being impersonated by someone else. Hence, his first real appearance was in Journey into Mystery Annual No. 1 in 1965. Hercules is a demigod with superhuman strength. In fact, in his first appearance, Hercules and Thor fought against each other, matching punch for punch and club to hammer. Zeus eventually stopped the fight when he realized there wouldn't be an end to it. Hercules and Thor have since joined hands and fought side by side with the Avengers. Hercules' powerful muscles allow him to draw strength from his legs and take giant leaps across distances, almost as if he's flying. He can also send across shock waves by using his hands and feet. Additionally, he's invulnerable, has super speed and agility, and can heal quickly. He's one of Marvel's most formidable superheroes. It's said that if Thor and Hercules merge their powers, they can destroy worlds. And did we mention that he's truly immortal? He is the son of a god, after all. Morgan Le Fay DC and Marvel both had a character named Morgan Le Fay, but Jack Kirby created the DC version of this supervillain. The evil sorceress first appeared in the Batman Volume 36, Sir Batman at King Arthur's Court. Morgan Le Fay, or Morgana, is Madame Xanadu and the Lady of the Lake, Vivian's sister. Hence, she too possesses the blood of the Elder Folk like her sisters. It's also where she gets her mystical art from. Morgana tried to seduce King Uther, but failed. She then ended up having an affair with Arthur, son of King Uther and Egrain, and birthed a child named Mordred. Morgana was morally evil and wanted to conquer the world through any means possible. 
She was skilled in black magic, which was too powerful for the strongest of sorcerers. Although Morgan could age, she kept herself young using her magic. With her powers, she could summon the horned demon Kafir to come to her aid, as seen in The Demon, number 16. Morgan's magic was stolen by Merlin to keep her from causing further chaos. This led her to create an armor to protect her body from withering away. She also uses devices that help her see across miles and a machine that uses magic to capture and steal lives. Lucifer, Marvel. Marvel has used the name Lucifer for two different characters, but the one credited to Jack Kirby and Stan Lee first appeared in the X-Men number 9. Lucifer was from Quistalium and came to Earth to lay a path for Arcane's or Quist's takeover of Earth. However, his plans were sabotaged by Charles Xavier. In anger, Lucifer threw a massive stone at the Professor, causing him to be paralyzed below the waist and leading a wheelchaired life. Lucifer was created as a super-intelligent quest, adept in science and technology-related knowledge. He can manipulate ionic energies to make himself powerful, generate force fields and even attack his enemies with bolts. He also has weapons that fire destructive energy and the device he uses for teleportation. Moreover, the Arcane designed a supercomputer named Dominus with abilities to encapsulate the world with mind-deadening rays that allow the Arcane to subjugate the people there which Lucifer used to his advantage. More interestingly, Lucifer can form psychic links between himself and others, where some of his powers can also be transferred. He uses this link to hypnotize a small town to lure the X-Men and Charles Xavier. However, Angel killed Lucifer, and the people he had psychic links with couldn't take the trauma and died too. Devil Dinosaur We had dragons first, and now it's time for evil dinosaurs. Jack Kirby created Devil Dinosaur to resemble a Tyrannosaurus, only this one was crimson-colored and hailed from a parallel Earth called the Dinosaur World. Devil Dinosaur debuted in Marvel's Devil Dinosaur No. 1 in 1978, offering a peek at Devil's story and his companionship with an ape named Moon Boy. Devil was a mutant alien with extreme strength and superhuman intelligence. Kirby developed Devil Dinosaur in an attempt to compete with his own DC creation, Commandy, only with a dinosaur in the limelight since they were popular during the time. Originally planned as an animated series, the Devil Dinosaur had a very short stint and was discontinued. However, the character lived through the comic books, though not in predominant roles. Kirby also mentioned that the idea behind the ape-like friend and the dinosaur was to show a world just before humans evolved and dinosaurs were extinct. The Devil Dinosaur series was revived in 2016, titled Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, where he had the ability to switch bodies with Moon Girl and also modify his size. Devil is said to be extremely loyal to both Moon Boy and Moon Girl. Boomerang Boomerang is a baseball player turned assassin of Australian origin, but American bred. Boomerang, originally named Frederick Myers, was created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and first appeared in Tales to Astonish No. 81 in 1966. His passion for baseball gave him a powerful pitching arm, which he later started using to hurl weapons at his enemies. Although Fred made it to the leagues playing professional baseball, he was caught taking bribes. That was the end of his baseball career, but a beginning to his criminal life as he joined the secret empire. After the Empire collapsed, Boomerang became a hired assassin. Over the years, Boomerang has fought against several Marvel heroes, including Iron Fist, Hulk, and Shang-Chi, but Spider-Man seems to be his archenemy. So, it's been a battle between Boomerangs and webs. Ironically, Boomerang's death occurs in an attempt to save Spider-Man from a gang of villains. Boomerang wears a custom-made suit that has hidden pockets to accommodate his differently sized boomerangs. Each of his boomerangs is equipped with unique ploys from detonation to tear gas to slicing through objects to manipulating small-scale gravity fields. He also has jets in his boots, which are connected cybernetically to his headgear. Modoc, mental organism designed only for killing, Modoc was originally George Tarleton, whom Lyle Getz, the scientist supreme from AIM, turned into the human computer while Tarleton was aiding in developing a cosmic cube. Modoc was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and debuted in 1967 in Tales of Suspense number 94. As Tarleton turned into a human computer, the AIM scientists also tried giving him super intelligence. However, his fragile body couldn't handle the absurdly enlarged size of his skull, and he was placed on the doomsday chair. But instead of using his abilities for good, Modoc unleashed his evil ambitions, starting with killing the AIM scientists. Modoc has repeatedly fought Captain America and also Hulk, Ms. Marvel, and Thing, among others. Modoc's giant brain makes him highly intelligent, with the ability to store and process the world's data. He can analyze tactical data to predict outcomes, and also strategize to plan a flawless victory. He also has psionic and telepathic abilities. More interestingly, he can emit focused energy beams called mind beams to attack his enemies. Modoc was eventually transformed back to his human form, only for Modoc's superior to take its place. Ares, Marvel. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby brought yet another character from Greek mythology into the Marvelverse. This time it was Ares, son of Zeus and Hera. 
The character's first Modern Age appearance was in Thor number 129, where Hercules reached out to Ares to fight on his behalf, but Ares refused because of his hatred towards his half-brother. Instead, Thor went to Hercules' rescue. Thor and Hercules have been thorns in Ares' life and also his archenemies. He's tried to conquer Olympia repeatedly, only to be stopped by Hercules and Thor. However, Ares had briefly given up his sinful lifestyle and lived a simple mortal being's life on Earth. He was recruited by Iron Man and Ms. Marvel to join the Avengers post the Civil War and even fought Ultron as an Avenger. But his morals didn't align with Earth's superheroes, and he became an anti-hero who was often misled into wrongdoings. Hercules enjoys the genetics of an Olympian god and is practically immortal. He's called the God of Warfare for his expertise in manipulating battles. He also possesses superhuman strength, speed, stamina, and durability. His regenerative abilities are an added boon to his fantastic reflexes and agility, making him an almighty being. Big Barda Big Barda was crafted by Jack Kirby to be DC's anti-hero. She first appeared in the 1971 comics Mr. Miracle No. 4. Interestingly, Kirby is said to have based this character on an American singer and actress, Lainey Kazan, who was pictured half-nude in Playboy. Kirby also loosely based the interplay between Mr. Miracle and Big Barda based on his own relationship with his wife. Phew, talk about getting inspired. Big Barda was said to be a part of Granny Goodness' female furies and a fought for the dark side. She changed her ways when she fell in love with Scott Free, aka Mr. Miracle, and also Darkseid's adopted son. Big Barda has fought alongside the Justice League and the Birds of Prey. When Barda was made a part of the female furies, she received genetic enhancements which gave her superhuman abilities like super strength and also ceased her aging. Her proximity to the source gave her godlike powers, and she was referred to as a new god. Barda is said to be above six feet tall, with incredible reflexes, adept in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and uses a kick-ass weapon called the Mega Rod. Big Barda went on to be one of the sexiest comic book female characters. Becca Becca was another new god, just like Big Barda. She was the daughter of Himon, a scientist who led an uprising against Darkseid. Becca was created by John Kirby to first appear in DC graphic novel number 4, The Hunger Dogs, where Becca fell in love with Darkseid's biological son, Orion, aka Dog of War. Becca and Orion escaped from Darkseid's apocalypse and settled on New Genesis. Later, Becca was also seen helping Batman rescue Superman from the planet Dasad. That time, Becca romanced Batman only to return to Orion when he came for her. While still reminiscing about Batman, Becca was murdered by an unknown entity who was later revealed as the Infinity Man. DC revived Becca's character with their new launch in 2011, giving her a new timeline and expanding her powers to manipulate emotions. As a new god, Becca enjoys eternal youth and also has abilities like superhuman speed and durability. She's excellent at wielding a sword to slice the enemy in half without shedding sweat. She can manipulate people's minds to follow her without question and can also heal the injured with her touch. Additionally, Becca was also a skilled scientist, like her father. Diablo Marvel An Evil Alchemist Diablo was one of Marvel's supervillains created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and one whom Lee considered an absolute failure. Diablo was first penned in Fantastic Four number 30, selling his alchemy around the world, trying to take control of it. He even transformed Thing back into Ben, but tricked him into changing back into Thing. The Fantastic Four, however, captured and trapped Diablo in his castle. Diablo made appearances in several Marvel comics. He's said to be a genius with superhuman intellect and practices mystical art along with alchemy. With serums thus formulated, he can cease his aging process and gain a sense of immortality. He's also adorned with a certain hypnotic and telepathic powers, although it's not clearly mentioned how he does it. But why was this seemingly powerful villain considered a failure? Although Lee and Kirby created Diablo to be a deadly evil, Lee felt that the character didn't have any memorable traits or a great backstory. He felt he couldn't connect with this supervillain and hence regretted making him. Yet, this master of evil made it to the Fantastic Four television series and video games. Guess he wasn't entirely a failure. Challengers of the Unknown Challengers of the Unknown were created by Jack Kirby during his stint with DC. However, it's often debated whether it was his solo work or whether he co-created it with either Joe Simon or Dave Wood. Nonetheless, the four Challengers of the Unknown debuted in the 1957 comic Showcase No. 6. The Challengers were showcased as a team of scientific explorers who travelled around beating death and leading to new discoveries. The group consisted of a scientist named Walter Haley, aka Professor Kyle Morgan, a pilot who was nicknamed Ace, Matthew Ryan, aka Red, who was the fearless and often reckless hero, and the well-built but witless Rocky, real name Leslie Davis. 
If these four seem familiar, eh, you're not wrong. Although it isn't official, it looks like Jack Kirby and Stan Lee based the Fantastic Four comics in 1961 on these characters from Challenges of the Unknown. Fantastic Four was one of Marvel's biggest successes, making their mark among fans. Although the Challengers didn't have a very long spell, DC kept reviving them by bringing them back in smaller roles in future comics. The Challengers also didn't appear to have any superpowers, but their wits and strength kept them going. Giant Man it appears Marvel has used the term Giant Man for several superheroes, but all in the universe of Ant-Man. Giant Man was originally scientist Henry or Hank Pym, who, along with Wasp, has saved the day more than once. Created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee in 1963, the character first appeared in Tales to Astonish, number 49. In later editions, Giant Man was portrayed by an Indian American named Raz Malhotra, and of course Scott Lang, who went on to star in the Marvel movies as Ant-Man. Even Bill Foster, who took on the title of Black Goliath, is said to be Giant Giant Man, Hank's successor. Hank Pym was a scientist with expertise in quantum physics. Using his combined knowledge in robotics, AI, and quantum physics, he developed the Pym particles, which allowed molecular changes in the human body and could alter his size from being a tiny ant to a giant man. Giant Man has fought many battles with and against the Avengers. Hank created Ultron and coalesced his flesh with this technology. Toward the end, he completely transformed himself into Ultron, threatening a world takeover, and was destroyed by Vision. Infinity Man we mentioned Infinity Man earlier as Becker's killer. So, who was Infinity Man? Jack Kirby created the character who was originally Astor. However, Astor passes on his powers to Drax, Darkseid's brother, who then takes on the mantle of Infinity Man. Infinity Man first appeared in Forever People No. 1, where he was called upon by the Forever People to rescue them from the Gravi Guards and fights Darkseid briefly alongside Superman. The Forever People keep granting Infinity Man superpowers, allowing him to fight many battles. Infinity Man, as the name suggests, has infinite strength, can fall Fly, teleport, manipulate mass and matter, and also possesses magnetic powers. He has quick regenerative abilities too. The laws of nature don't entirely apply to Infinity Man, which allows him to use energy to his advantage. He's also said to be a telepath. Infinity Man appeared to be a hero for the Forever People. However, in later DC editions, the Infinity Man emerged as the killer of the new gods, including Becker, and was challenged by Orion, Superman, and Mr. Miracle. He was ultimately destroyed by Mr. Miracle after an engaging battle. Apart from comic books, Infinity Man also made a television appearance in the animated series Young Justice. The Celestials the July 1976 edition of The Eternals No. 1 saw Jack Kirby's creation, the Celestials, appear for the first time. The Celestials were cosmic beings, credited to be the creators of the multiverses, but their origin story was only established in the 2017 edition of The Ultimates 2, No. 6. The first firmament was bored of being the only being in the universe, and so he created coloured and black individuals. Unfortunately, as time progressed, the colored beings rose against their maker and became known as the Celestials. The Celestials and First Firmament, along with the black beings known as Aspirants, engaged in an ultimate battle that led to the creation of the multiverse. From then on, the Celestials visited each of the universes to keep track of the life forms and energies of the verse and manipulate it to suit their needs. As cosmic beings, the Celestials possess limitless powers to influence reality and use technology to their advantage. The Celestials are said to have played a crucial part in adding mutant genes in humans, causing Atlantis to sink to the depth of the ocean and even defeat the gods of Earth. The Celestials Celestials have been a threatening force for the Avengers to deal with. Fighting American Fighting American is perhaps one of the few superheroes to have been published by various comic book issuers, including Marvel and DC. He was created by Jack Kirby and Joe Simon, and debuted in the 1954 Prize Comics Fighting American No. 1. The interesting part of the story is that Joe Simon and Jack Kirby also created Captain America for Timely Comics, now known as Marvel Comics, in 1941. Timely Comics decided to relaunch Captain America in 1954 under Atlas Comics, which didn't go down very well with the creator duo. Fighting America became their reply to Captain America and was given similar attributes. Fighting Americans has induced superpowers such as extreme strength, durability, and stamina. He has expertise in hand-to-hand -hand combat and has super speed, and he's ageless. In his first appearance, Nelson Flagg, aka Fighting American, is showcased as a puny guy with a super-built brother Johnny. After his anti-communist remarks, Johnny is killed, and a vengeful Nelson joins the US Army's program, which transfers his mind and life into Johnny's body. Additionally, he gets enhanced abilities and transforms into the Fighting American. Fighting American's last appearance was in 2017, when Titan Comics revived him. Frightful Four Countering the Fantastic Four with a Frightful Four, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, appearing for the first time in Marvel's 1965 edition of Fantastic Four No. 36. The four villains became known as the Sandman, Madame Medusa, Wizard, and Pastepot Pete. 
who, in their debut, temporarily defeated the Fantastic Four. Eventually, the Fantastic Four managed to overcome their nemesis. However, Medusa was mind-controlled by the wizard, and Charles Xavier was able to remove the device from behind her neck. The Frightful Four then recruited the Beetle, although that partnership too was short-lived. Over the years, the Frightful Four have repeatedly looked for their fourth member. The only three constants in the team for the longest time were the Wizard, Sandman and Pastepot Pete, who changed his name to Trapster. But soon it was just the Wizard recruiting new members where his ultimate goal was to still defeat the Fantastic Four. Recently, the Frightful Four consisted of the Wizard and his dysfunctional family, which included Salamandra, his ex-wife, his daughter Cole, who could shapeshift, and his half-dragon. Hydro-Man was also a part of the team. Although they were defeated by the Fantastic Four, the Frightful Four managed to escape and are absconding. Human Cannonball A circus performance inspired this supervillain, who launched himself out of a cannonball to attack his enemies. Human Cannonball was created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and debuted in The Incredible Hulk No. 3. Human Cannonball is a part of the notorious team who calls themselves the Circus of Crime. In his first appearance, he tried to injure Green Goliath by launching himself out of the cannon. Instead, an impactful punch from Hulk sent him shooting out of the tent. In another attempt, Human Cannonball adorned a bullet-shaped helmet but again faced defeat at the hands of Daredevil and Spider-Man. Human Cannonball repeatedly shifted alliances to find the right team of villains for fighting the Marvel heroes. Unfortunately for him, he was always easily defeated, which only added to his frustration. Human Cannonball doesn't possess any superpowers. He does have a padded armor that offers overall protection from physical injuries. His most significant strength is his forceful expulsion from the Cannonball, which can cause considerable damage to his enemies. He also has a hammer-like weapon, which he uses to attack his enemies. Human Cannonball wasn't the most successful of Marvel's supervillains and wasn't seen in too many editions either. Jack Kirby has indeed given both the Marvel and DC universes a horde of superheroes and villains who are exciting, thrilling and entertaining. He was an excellent storyteller and artist of great caliber. If you know of any other character designed by Kirby that's not on our list, let us know in the comments below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.